Hey folks, Crazy Clown Randy here again, and this time we're going to look at uh, something different. We're going to look at, uh, instead of game number one in the 20 from the Sega CD series, we're going to look at the good, the bad, and the ugly in general of the Sega CD, and we're also going to look at the honorable mentions list, games that didn't quite make the top 20 cut, but are still worth checking out. So let's start with the good. Uh, the sprite scaling and rotation on a number of uh, Sega CD games were fantastic, including uh, Soul Star right here. Just really, uh, really impressive on a number of games. And it was also really impressive on the game uh, Batman Returns. Batman Returns had... Uh, I thought kind of clunky uh, action sequences, but the, the racing uh, elements were great. Beautiful. And uh, same as the uh, Sega CD or Mega CD uh, boot up screens. And there were also great anime cutscenes in a number of uh, Sega CD games, including Popful Mail here. Here is uh, perhaps the best. Uh, in terms of anime sequences that the Sega CD had to offer in uh, this game, this place is gutted. It would take an army to do this. It was just like watching an anime uh, show. I know you're involved in this. Somehow, I was I was so blown away when I saw this. I was like, wow. <laughs> this destruction is just a small demonstration of my new power. <laughs> Get a grip. You're strong, but you don't have that much power. And then here's uh, Lunar Eternal Blue. And I'll just let the cat out of the bag. This is going to be game number one in my 20 from the Sega CD series. And we'll uh, get to that one someday. Just darn impressive. I think I had a dream one time before I uh, bought the Sega CD that it was going to be able to play anime sequences. And guess what? <laughs> it can. Super, super impressive. Another yeah. scene from... Uh, Lunar Eternal Blue. Come because I hold the most miraculous power of all It has of mostly uh, new characters. The power of love. There's some, uh, some cameo appearances by some uh, characters from Lunar Silver Star. And uh, there were wonderful immersive soundtracks on a number of Sega CD games, including uh, uh, Lords of Thunder with its thrash metal soundtrack and Lunar Silver Star with a great, great soundtrack, especially uh, the town of Moribia has uh, some of my favorite music in the game. And then, of course, uh, Echo the Dolphin and uh, Echo Tides of Time has very, very relaxing, peaceful uh, soundtracks. Just beautiful. And you could also switch between the different tracks. Uh, I think if you press A, B, or C during the boot-up screen. Pretty darn neat. Also, there were lots of great RPGs on the system. Lunar, Lunar Eternal Blue, Shining Force CD, Dark Wizard, uh, Advanced Dungeons of Dragon's Eye of the Beholder, Vi, uh, Dungeon Master 2, Heimdall, and there was the great Sega CD uh, backup that gave you extra RAM space. Definitely worth getting. <laughs> and the Sega CDX was really cool, a portable uh, CD player. You could just play whatever CDs you wanted on it. And, you know, play the Sega CD and Genesis. And the six-button controller was fantastic with the uh, Sega CD. And it, I think it came with it after a while, uh, after its release. The, I like the interactive feel of a number of games, including Prize Fighter. It's kind of cool. And now, the bad <laughs> from the Sega CD. Uh, one thing, boy, was it expensive. Crazy expensive. And uh, the 32X, skip it. 
it, it could come with the Sega CD or be plugged into the Sega CD. Don't bother. Um, the graphics was often just Genesis quality. Nothing terribly special. And we're just looking at a little bit of uh, uh, one of the games. Uh, there was some long-ass load times. Here's uh, Fatal Fury Special. Even after selecting your characters, there was more load time. Holy crap! <laughs> Again? Oh my god. So annoying. But uh, at any rate, here's more uh, loading times. This is uh, Mortal Kombat on the Sega CD. <laughs> Gee, mini Christmas! <laughs> Um, there were durability issues. The connector where the Sega uh, Genesis slid in tended to break. And uh, also the uh, the uh, laser eye reading the discs often hey, failed. The bull knows you're here. There were way too many motion video games steak. on the system. Some of these were good, but it's it still, there were way too many of those. Way to take out the bad guy. <laughs> and there were way too many of the uh, make-your-own-video type of uh, games. Way too many of them. They were terrible. And there's Night, Night Trap. So don't even I still enjoyed that up. game quite a bit. There was big controversy over the violent content. And Night Trap faced a lot of the scrutiny. Kind of undeservedly so. This was probably the nastiest part of the game. You see blood flow through that tube there. Parents just really hated this type of thing. And the the window, the action window, was really small in a number of games like Prize Fighter. There were only 200 some games total in the system. And now the ugly. Uh, there was heavy grain in a number of games, including Dragon's Lair here, which otherwise I thought played well. And there's the Terminator. Very, very, very grainy video. I mean, really grainy. <laughs> it's kind of hard to get over that sometimes. And there was some pretty dire acting or voice acting sometimes, especially in Prince of Persia here. Soon the princess... And all of Persia will be mine. I will be Sultan. I am invincible. <laughs> Princess! <laughs> really bad acting. <laughs> I used to laugh at it. It was so bad. And in Final Fight. He he, Mr. Hagger. <laughs> and there was some nasty gory sequences, which might not be in some up some people's alley. <laughs> There's Heart of the Alien, that was pretty nasty. <laughs> and uh, Eternal Champions Challenge from the Dark Side. <laughs> the loser gets shredded multiple times. It's <laughs> really, really gross. It didn't bother me. It might bother some people. Just kind of a fair warning. <laughs> it made me laugh in this game. There were a lot of gory deaths. And now we're going to look at the honorable mentions. As I said, uh, games that didn't quite make the top 20 list, but are well worth checking out. First is uh, The Adventures of Batman and Robin, and this has some fairly cool uh, driving sequences, as well as great uh, animated scenes from the uh, anime series of the early 90s. But be careful. One little bump and boom! You're Quano! And uh, also we have AH-3 Thunderstrike, which is a uh, an air combat sim with both uh, ground and air targets. Not too bad. Uh, next up is The Amazing Spider-Man vs. Kingpin. And tell me what the Kingpin is up to this time? Is there really a bomb planted somewhere? Yeah. This has animated uh, scenes 
as well as some some decent action scenes where Spidey gets to swing on his uh, web. There are some also goofy fighting scenes which I wasn't a fan of. And uh, Android Assault. And this is a cool uh, horizontally scrolling shoot him up. Next up is uh, Batman Returns. I was not a fan of the uh, fighting sequences, but the uh, driving sequences were absolutely breathtaking. Great spiraling, uh, sprite uh, scaling and rotation in this, in, in the driving scenes. Next up is a uh, battle core, and it's kind of a one-on-one -on -one mech type of battle. certain dangers on the playing field that you gotta watch out for, like lava. Uh, next up is Bill Walsh College Football. And this is definitely one of the better sports titles for the Sega CD. And you get a pick from a bunch of different uh, college teams. Not all of them. You can't pick Oregon, I don't believe. You can also pick some uh, classic great college teams. And it has the uh, Madden three window system when uh, selecting a receiver I remember this getting a uh, pretty high accolades and deservedly so and now we're going to look at Cobra Command and this was originally an arcade laser disc title and uh, it's it's pretty well uh, captured on the uh, Sega CD and now we're going to look at Dark Wizard, and this is a tactical RPG. And this had fantastic music in, in it. Tactical RPGs aren't really my type of RPG. And here is Dragon's Lair, and even though it's really grainy, it's still pretty well uh, captured for the Sega CD. I used to have this. And now we're going to look at Dungeon Master 2. Or Dungeon Master 2 Skull Keep, a, a uh, RPG with uh, an interactive menu. And you can turn left or right and you'll battle various monsters and pick up things and use things. A lot of, lot of really good RPGs for this system. And now we're going to look at Echo the Dolphin. Fantastic music and uh, Echo Tides of Time, its sequel. Kind of cool uh, animated sequence here. And some uh, 3D sequences as well. You can summon a radar screen. And this is Eye of the Beholder, Dungeons and Dragons. Um, it too has an interactive menu. You can uh, Name your characters, fight monsters, pick up things, use things. Pretty cool. And this is Fatal Fury Special, and even though it had really long loading times, it was pretty well done, I thought. I used to have this. Uh, good, uh, good soundtrack. Uh, good action. Good controls. And now we're going to look at FIFA International Soccer, a very well done soccer game played in a uh, three quarters perspective. Great sound effects, um, good action. I, I'm really impressed, and I don't, I don't really like soccer. <laughs> so yeah, this is definitely one of the strongest sports titles for the system. And uh, next up, we're going to look at Heart of the Alien, and this is the sequel to Out of This World, or Another World, and you can actually play the original Out of This World on uh, on this game. But uh, this was so cool because it, had, it picked up right where the first game left off. But in this game, you control the alien, not uh, the human. And there was a very cool uh, opening sequence that linked the two games together. And uh, the dark, disturbing uh, nature of the first game is cranked way up for this one. There's lots of gory, violent deaths that you can encounter. 
the controls aren't very good, unfortunately, but it's it's still well worth playing. You you can pick up a whip that you can actually use as a laser uh, gun. There's one of the really gory deaths. <laughs> Yucky. <laughs> but uh, this time we're gonna look at Jaguar HJ220, a fairly cool racing game. Pretty good controls. And this is uh, Jurassic Park, and this was kind of interesting. It kind of took on a Resident Evil kind of look. Um, and you have an interactive menu, and you can pick up things and use them, and there are sometimes uh, shooting sequences. It, they really tried something totally different with the uh, Jurassic Park game, and I, I think it's pretty cool. And uh, next up, we're going to look at Lethal Enforcers, the uh, arcade game by uh, Konami. Pretty well uh, reenacted on the Sega CD. Situation under control. Many have tried. <laughs> and this is None Mansion of Hidden Souls. Kind of a cool Resident Evil type of game where you go through various areas and uh, try to keep your. Uh, younger sister from being turned into a butterfly and there's a lot of uh, people that have been turned into a butterfly that you can interact with some kind of cool uh, graphics kind of grainy but still pretty pretty interesting now we're gonna look at Mortal Kombat this had insanely long loading times it's very frustrating but it had a cool commercial to start the the game off and uh, the controls were good, and the sounds were good, music were, were good. So much of this was actually spot on. I thought this was a pretty good conversion, but yeah, the load times were annoying. And it had all the fatalities. You might have had to put in the uh, dullard code to be able to, to use them or see the blood. And we also have uh, NBA Jam, and this was another good uh, arcade conversion. You could uh, put in a lot of those hidden codes and play as uh, uh, weird characters like Bill Clinton. And you can be on fire and the ball will be flaming and you could jump from far away and dunk it. And next we're going to look at NHL 94. I had this. This was fantastic. You open up with uh, NHL players entering the uh, arena very cool uh, opening sequence uh, it did unfortunately didn't have regular season play um, or you know uh, regular season stats or whatever and it didn't have uh, crisp one timers like later in the series but it's still really well done great sound effects you can hear the uh, crowd swell as uh, you approach a goal um, very cool organ type of music. I, I had this. I really like this. But uh, next we are going to have a look at Pitfall, the Mayan Adventure. This is a pretty cool uh, adventure game based on, you know, the old Atari 2600 game. various uh, things that can bounce you to higher areas in the, the jungle or whatever setting you're in. Various different settings like uh, mine, mine cards and the jungle and whatnot. Underground caves. I like the detail of Pitfall Harry waving his arms as he's trying to keep his balance on that mine cart. And you'll also encounter the 2600 graphics of the Scorpions. <laughs> and you can play the original Pitfall game for the Atari 2600 on this game. The name now we're going to look at Rise Turn of the Dragon, which was a cool uh, into the heart of man. Uh, adventure game billion people. with a pretty really funny uh, up this sense of humor. Could use a blaster shoved down the throat. You interact with, with text messages or... Uh, you can actually put on armor and stuff. Um, talk to various characters. Go to look at different things. Pretty cool. Let 
Well, Fisto oatmeal, multi-grain eat meal, long suspected as the cause of numerous cases of spontaneous combustion. And now we're going to look at road rash. This is kind of choppy, uh, uh, but a lot of people love this. It's, it's kind of cool. It's a motorcycle racing game in which you can punch the opponent and knock them over. Great soundtrack. And now we're going to look at Robo Alest, and this is a uh, uh, vertically scrolling shoot 'em up with a uh, feudal Japan uh, motif. Shingen Takeda. Kind of cool to uh, meld uh, shoot 'em ups with uh, Japanese uh, uh, history. There will be uh, boss fights, and there will be dialogue between you and the boss. Or your character will have dialogue of their own. This is part of a long series of uh, shoot-em-ups. Uh, at any rate, the next game is uh, Secret of Monkey Island, and this was kind of a cool... Uh, uh, interactive text and uh, point and click adventure and you go through this pirate town and you uh, talk to various people um, you will encounter sword fighting duels in which you try to out insult the other guy very funny uh, sense of humor in this game Uh, I remember seeing this at the stores. I, I never, never really tried it on my own, but uh, looking back at it, it is it is pretty funny. There are a lot of uh, point-and-click adventures on the computer back in the early '90s. And now we're going to look at Time Gal, and this is a, a reaction game like Dragon Slayer, in which you'll get little clues on screen on what to do. And there are funny deaths you can encounter in this game. And uh, you will. This is also based on an arcade laser disc title. And you can actually uh, stop time at certain points and choose from a list of different uh, options of what to do. And you can, and only one of them will be right. And you have a certain amount of time to pick one of those uh, decisions. And then you go off to the next uh, time period. Kind of cool. I had that one. And last, we're going to look at Tomcat Alley. And this is kind of a nifty little uh, full motion Edward. video slash uh, air combat 15 game. minutes ago, our AWACS aircraft detected a Tu-22 bomber trying to fly in under our radar. This is going to wrap up the uh, honorable mentions. Hang on, Ratchet, we're engaging your MiG. And after this, we're going to look at the dishonorable mentions, the game that you, the games that you should avoid. Some people might like some of them. Yeah, I put the dis part in kind of a, a shit-looking font because <laughs> these, as far as I am concerned, are not very good. We're going to start with AX101. Kind of looks nice, but it's very, very, very dull. It's got kind of the polygon graphics. But yeah, it's very repetitive and dull, I think. And next, we're going to look at Afterburner 3. And this actually, I think, looks a little worse than the original Afterburner 2 on the Sega Genesis. Really awful. And next, we're going to look at The Animals. And while it's kind of cool to see look, like little video clips of animals, um, you could just an pick up an encyclopedia for a lot cheaper. An animal that sleeps that much can actually have a personality. And you get to look at various different animals in a zoo. Different pictures, different multimedia. Eh. I'm not really impressed. <laughs> Now we're going to look at one of the worst games for the Sega CD, Black Hole Assault. The game Heavy Nova for the Sega Genesis was pretty bad, but at least it had 
uh, adventure sequences. This is just robot battles, and they're very poorly done. <laughs> terrible, terrible game. But at any rate, next is uh, a game called Bouncers, in which you are a basketball, and you try to jump into the hoop or bounce off of things to go into the hoop and score points. It's really stupid. And next we're going to look at Bug Blasters. This is pretty lame. And this is full motion video with uh, you uh, and a team of uh, exterminators taking out bugs and you use crosshairs to shoot them. Very repetitive, really pretty lame. And this was one of the later games for the system, I think. Next, we're going to look at Corpse Killer, and this is this is a pretty crappy uh, Operation Wolf type of game, first-person shooter, but with uh, zombies that you have to shoot down. The the camp, there's a little camp appeal in the acting. And uh, Vincent Chevelli from uh, you and your clowns uh, here. Oh, he's been in various movies and shows and stuff. Pentagon operation. And next, we're going to look at Formula One World Championship. And it's yeah, it's not very good. The controls are terrible. And next, we're going to look at... Oh, man, this is another awful one. Joe Montana Football. This is one of the earliest titles, and it's super choppy. Looks, looks terrible. Oh, man, this this helped kill the Sega CD right as it got started. <laughs> Buffalo hits the bomb for a first down. And uh, next, we're going to look at the Lawnmower Man. I don't even know why the movie was made. It's very loosely based on a Stephen King short story. And this has... Eh. Okay-ish polygon 3D graphics, but it's it's kind of dull. And now we're going to look at the, the Make My Video... <laughs> whatever. <laughs> the Make My Video games. And they're all pretty much the same. You just try to mix your own uh, videos, music videos with various strobes, mixers, uh, slowdown uh, samples and stuff. It's really lame and there were too many of these type of games. Now we're going to look at NFL's greatest uh, San Francisco versus Dallas 78. And it's really stupid. You don't actually play. There are videos that are shown and you select the plays but the, the play is shown on that video screen. So you don't actually really interact in a football game. It's really stupid. And next we're going to look at Panic. And I don't understand this game at all. You're supposed to select from a set of buttons and make something happen in a certain sequence and hope that it's not a bad uh, result. And that's the whole freaking game. How stupid. And he gets sucked up. It's silly and weird, but not very good. Now we're going to look at Power Factory, CNC Music Factory, and yeah, this is the same as any of those stupid make-your-own-video games. And now we're going to look at Revengers of Vengeance, and this is a, a really terrible beat-em-up. Um, yeah, the beat-em-up sequences are beyond awful. There is some kind of interest in the... Uh, in a special option that you can choose, which is, uh, I forget what it's, it's, it's like a story mode or something, in which you can play sort of an RPG setting, or a uh, shoot 'em up setting, and make your character more powerful, kind of interesting, more interesting than the, uh, beat 'em up, or, or, a uh, um, versus battle, uh, type of sequence for sure. Now we're going to look at the Space Adventure. And this was a terrible uh, uh, interactive menu type of game or uh, uh, interactive uh, dialogue choice type of game based on a, a manga. 
looks can be deceiving. And you can't hardly hear their dialogue over the sound effect. Sure. <laughs> and uh, this is lovely. You can stare at her bust and comment. Really, really bad game. <laughs> and now we're going to look at Star Wars chess. And boy, is this awful. This is just a game of chess with Star Wars pieces. And you see a brief kind of poorly animated battle. Uh, when you uh, knock an opponent piece off. Very uh, minimal uh, sound effects or music. Just really, really bad. And there's Chewbacca beating this guy here. That's, yeah, that's terrible. I mean... I don't like chess to begin with. <laughs> now we're going to look at Surgical Strike. Kind of a repetitive, lame uh, full motion video slash uh, shooting uh, uh, game. You, you get to blow a lot of shit up, <laughs> but it's, yeah, it's, it's very repetitive. And uh, next we're going to look at Ultraverse Prime. This is just. Not a very interesting beat em up. I'd rather uh, play Streets of Rage 2 on the Sega Genesis. This isn't this isn't any better. At least you get to pick up uh, really big things and throw them because you're a superhero. There's uh, boss battles. But. Um, Last of all, we have uh, Wild, Wild Woody, Woody. where you are a pencil. I know my name, but it seems that's all I and know. Sometimes it's kind of cool that you can draw, or you can select from a notepad certain things that you can draw to help you advance in the game, like a uh, like a ship, like right here. But otherwise, the it's really not very good, and the controls are terrible. And uh, you eliminate enemies by erasing them with your butt. <laughs> Too weird. <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> well, that was uh, my look at the Sega CD games that were uh, good for it and games that were bad for it. And uh, I thank you for watching. Hope you learned a little something you didn't before. And I hope to see you soon for game number one in R20 from the Sega CD series. See you then, folks. Bye-bye.